years, inflation fell to a three-year low, with prices rising a mere 2.5 percent in August. The state of the economy, of course, top of mind for many right now, especially at the presidential election just months away. It becomes a lot of political fodder this time right. of year. Everything from in inflation to interest rates to the stock market could be impacted. Michael Mazran from the Retirement Education Foundation here to break it all down. We are expected to get some good news regarding interest rates today, Michael. We are. Two o'clock today, they're going to announce most likely never say guaranteed in this in this industry <laughs> right. but 99.9% .9 likely of at least a 25 basis point rate cut maybe even a, a 50 basis point rate cut really just de depending on what the fed thinks the economy's at if the economy if the fed thinks that the economy is starting to slow down a little too quickly they might do a 50 a 50 point rate cut to give the economy some juice again or if they're thinking you know what it, the the economy's cooling down but we're still on an okay pace they might just do a 20 but either way, this signals that the Fed has, has recognized, you know what, inflation has been falling since, since it peaked at 9.1% mm. in mid-2022. It's down to about 2.5%. And one thing I always want to point out when it comes to inflation falling, there's a huge misconception here that people think falling inflation means falling prices. That is not the case. Mm. Falling inflation simply means that prices are rising at a slower rate. That's, a, that, that's an interesting point because, mm. you know, people hear, oh, inflation is coming down a lot lately. But when they go to the grocery store, that they don't see that. Yes, uh, it's those falling prices. Exactly. <laughs> it simply means that in 2022, prices were rising, depending on the categories, at nine percent on uh, on an annual basis. Now they're rising at about two and a quarter, two and a half percent on an annual basis. So they're still rising, but not as quickly as they were. And the Fed, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the the Fed's target is roughly two percent. They want roughly two percent controlled lower inflation. They're getting closer to that target, so that's why they're now sort of taking their foot off these rate uh, these rate increases and going the opposite opposite way with rate cuts so in other words making money a little more uh, easy to attain to make big purchases cars houses that sort of thing exactly if you think of interest rates kind of like breaks for the economy if the economy is really cooking people are earning they're spending inflation starts to rise the Fed will tap the brakes by raising interest rates that, mm. that kind of cools people down slows the economy down people start people tend to stop spending so much when rates are higher as Inflation's cooling, the economy starts to slow. We've seen some unemployment tick up. The Fed says, okay, we can take our foot off the brake now and, and let the rates come back down a little lower to let the economy warm back up again. If you bought a house in the last four years at an interest rate that uh, uh, was very high at the time, is now a good time after today, assuming they do cut rates um, to refinance, or do you wait a couple of months, see if they do it again? So that's a great question. Rates are pro uh, projected to be cut a couple times over the next three to six months. So if someone bought a house and they're, they're stuck with a higher interest rate, which we saw post 2021, 2022, then maybe not run, don't run out today necessarily to refinance, but over the next three to six months, keep an eye out because rates are likely to start coming down over the next three to six months. When we look at this balance, and I know this is a complicated question perhaps, but you can you have a great way of simplifying these complicated issues. So the, keeping harmony between interest rates and inflation um, job numbers, all those things. Is is there like a magic formula or a magic number that they they try to keep in mind? And what what is it? What do you attribute all this up and down? So to? that's a great question that economists will debate to the end of time. If, yeah. if there should be a formula, if there should be human input. So the Fed has two official mandates. Number one is to keep prices stable, keep inflation under control, and number two, keep employment stable. So they want their their targets, their magic targets are 2% inflation rate and a 4% or lower unemployment rate. That's kind of their target. So if inflation starts to get too hot, they raise rates to slow inflation down. Mm. But if raising rates causes stress in the economy and that, that makes unemployment spike, they need to reduce rates to keep unemployment lower. Mm. So it's a constant balancing game they're trying, to, they're trying to pull off to keep the economy growing, but not too quickly and not too slowly. And of course, all these rate cuts uh, potentially coming near a presidential election. Coming up next hour, we are going to focus on the uh, financial uh, outlook for elections yes. and political seasons. Things and get a little like choppier <laughs> every election season. Well, because every, I feel like no matter where you go, if you're traveling, no matter what year it is, whoever's running, everyone's always 
griping about the economy and they're going to fix the economy. And so, yeah, we'll talk to you about uh, what's fixable <laughs> and what the what the truth is beyond all the political back and forth. Sounds good. What's the truth on the ground <laughs> right here? Right, right, right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thanks, Michael. Of course. We'll see of course. you in an hour.